Welcome to Survival Theory. I'm kind of stealth camping today. Uh, it's deer season, so I don't want to be out in the forest because there's a lot of people hunting right now. So I'm actually, I mean, technically I'm not in the National Forest, but yet I am. I'm in a neighborhood that's being cut out of a section of National Forest, and there's very few homes out here. So there was a road I could take, paved road, to a cul-de-sac park, look official, you know, because there's construction vehicles here and there, and then just wander out into the woods. Right now I'm walking on a, a uh, property line, you know, that was surveyed and semi, well, it was cleared at one point. <clears throat> it's kind of grown back now, but the woods are very thick. I mean, the woods are super, super thick. So it's hard to set up a shelter out there. So I'm going to try to go to one of these lots that they've cleared. Maybe grab the corner of it out of sight. Oh, we'll see how that goes. So what I wanted to show you guys is something that a subscriber sent to me. Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's a homemade tarp. It's a 10 by 10 tarp uh, specifically made for the plow point shelter. It's got uh, the guy lines, stakes, the tarp itself, plus a little bonus feature I'll show you in a minute, which I may need later because it it's supposed to rain here in a little while. It rained pretty good last night. Uh, this thing got pretty wet. I let it dry out before I packed it up again. I'm not a biologist, but it appears to be made out of ripstop nylon. So in setting this up the way it was intended, I'm gonna tie off my front here to the tree beautiful oak tree here and then I'll pull the middle up and I'm not going to use a pole in the middle or run a ridge line I'll just hang an individual line that it came with from the center over to that pine tree so on this end is an alien loop this medium hole is already used by the tarp to secure this to the tarp so I'm just going to use this big hole here and the small hole so I'll just make a bite, run it through, run that loop through the big hole there, and I'll just go around the small one. Bada bing, bada boom. That allows me to pull this. It grips so tight even just doing that. I'm actually gonna flip it around, there we go. Because this thing really grips I'm going to pull this loose end until I get it about where I want it. Probably somewhere about right there. Now to secure this, I just make another bite, run it the opposite direction, and drape that over the same loop. Pull it, and see it's gripping so tight. I'm going to have to manually pull that loose in there we go and that binds it all together to get it undone you just pop this loose boom and there you go now you're back to tightening it how you want you can retight uh, after you retighten it just pop that loop over on that end take seconds Alien loop, pretty cool. Now to pull up the middle, I'm going to use a toggle. Um, they've already provided a loop at one, one end of this cord. I'll just run it through that loop and then stick this little piece of wood in there. The reason I'm doing that is because when I go to tighten it and adjust it, I don't want to try to reach for the middle of the tarp. I want to be able to go to that tree and do the adjusting. So 
I've got my loop alien on this end holding the front up. I've got a toggle here holding the middle and going up the tree here probably seven and a half feet. I've got a trucker's hitch holding it up there. Check out these stakes that were sent with the tarp. Pretty long and these are the lightest stakes I've ever held in my life, literally. These are, these are lighter than my little titanium spikes. I mean, these are ridiculously lightweight. So, I mean, this whole bag weighs as much as a normal aluminum stake. So it's all set up now, I got it tight. Um, now what is this going on back here? What's this little point? I'll explain that in a minute. Let me show you some features on this. Well, look at that stitching. I mean, it's pretty amazing. It's got all these hangers on the inside. Hang a lantern, hang your mosquito net, um, whatever. Now, I'm in East Texas right now, and most of the time, say 10 months out of the year, heck, all year for that matter, depending on the weather, um, you can't set up many shelters because I mean you're limited to some variation of the a-frame the reason is you got to have a mosquito net mosquitoes are thick out here almost year-round and with a typical plow point it's a pain in the butt to set up a mosquito net now with this one with all these attachment points I can set it up right here I have a single point system that's what I usually use so I can hang it right here, drape my mosquito net, out, uh, mosquito net out in any direction, and be good to go. That's pretty awesome. Of course, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six hanging points. So, wow. Um, that allows me to use this shelter for almost any configuration. Um, probably even add a Rondack and hang a mosquito net in the middle. So that's pretty awesome. Now let me explain that little thing in the back there. See it? It's almost like a little miniature opening there. I'll show you what that's about. So the situation here is I've got a little extra material when I staked this down at the corner. It was floppy on the sides. So I went one in and staked that down. Did the same on the other side. And that gave me excess material in the in the back. Now most people would just leave it as is or even stake this down to the ground if they were worried about some kind of flopping. But I've used this extra material to create a wind tunnel or a breather so the air can flow and come out the back here. And all I did was stick a stick through there. I used the extra cordage hanging down from the trucker's hitch above, slapped the toggle on that thing, and then just wrapped it around a stake. So now I've got um, both a peephole to see back here. Like during the rain or something, I don't have to leave. I can just look back here. And it creates a breathing hole, good ventilation. So I actually like that. Yeah, it was supposed to rain today. Um, doesn't look like that's going to happen, but it might rain later. It's East Texas. But speaking of rain, let me show you a bonus feature that was sent to me. Now this is homemade by the same person that made that tarp. Um, check it out. Backpack cover. Um, you know, it's got the... Uh, shock cord there so you can tighten this up if you got a large pack, small pack or whatever. I've got a small pack. I already know from experience that this fits it because I had it covered up the other night during the rain. Um, I'll show you how I set it up.
So the first thing I do is reach into my little pocket here on the canteen and I get my hanging cord. Now I have a video about hanging a backpack or whatever. Um, same thing, it's a, I've got a little bit of 550 on this banker's line uh, to increase its length, but it's basically a piece of cordage with a loop tied in the middle. I'll just put that around the tree. Put this stick through the loop. Hang the backpack up. Slide it right over everything. So, I'm digging through my pack about to set up the mosquito net. And I take a break, drink some water. And I notice this corner over here is actually downhill. From over there, it's more secluded. I'm gonna keep my fire hidden more. And this already has a lot of pine needles right here. Because for bedding, I'm gonna need a ton of pine needles. So I just uh, moved the tarp over here, and this will give me a chance to uh, set it up in a different configuration, see how well it does. And even as an A-frame, you've still got hangers here. Uh, you've got two right there, almost right in the middle, so you can hang your mosquito net. Well, actually, right here in the middle, you do have one because you have this spot right here that you can hang your mosquito net from directly in the middle. And I'll, I'll tell you what that is in just a moment. All right, so let's learn something about this homemade tarp. I've got a letter here. From Bob Meadows, 56 Apple Springs Drive, Waverly, Tennessee. Hello. My goal is to remain completely anonymous to your viewers, so if you want to refer to me in the video, how about if we call me Bob? All right, Bob, we'll just call you Bob, keep you anonymous. Um, as far as I know, this is one of a kind. While I wanted, to, wanted it to be lightweight, this was not the primary focus. In my opinion, there is no tarp set up like plow point, so this has a built-in ridge line across the diagonal, which we saw when I set it up. Aligning the seams to match the ridge line adds a lot of strength. Since I was making this for myself, I added some crazy features. <laughs> crazy. That's right, Bob Meadows, that's crazy. Oh yeah, you're anonymous. I added some crazy features like matching the camo pattern at the seams, putting lots of hangers on the inside to dry clothes or hang a candle lantern, catenary cut edges from the stake to stake, built-in hiking pole nesting pods, and that's what I was showing you in the center there, um, where I could hang mosquito net even in the A-frame. Those are, uh, what do you call them, uh, use the right language here, hiking pole nesting pods. That's what they are, hiking pole nesting pods. Uh, you could use a stick because they do have material over the, the hole there, so it won't pu puncture the tarp. Um, so you can just kind of dull the sharp end of a stick and put it in that hole and it won't puncture the tarp. It's got one on the end to hold it up and then one in the center, so you didn't, you don't have to use a ridge line or um, these guy lines to set up the uh, plow point. Smart. Built-in hiking pole nesting pods at the front and middle. External center support loop, 
which we're using for this A-frame, and built-in loop allen, loop alien, for the easiest setup and tensioning. And yes, that loop alien does definitely make it easier. The tarp is 10 by 10, and two can easily fit with plenty of room for gear. This is true. Hang your pack on the support tree and use the pack cover to rainproof. Definitely works. My pack was out all last night. Dry as a bone. If anyone wants to include any of the ideas into their next sewing project, then more power to you. Oh, here's why the stakes are so awesome. The stakes are carbon fiber from Ruta Locura. Locura. Ruta Locura, something like that. The Atax 9 Camo and Loop Alien from Rip Stop by the Roll. I've heard of Rip Stop by the Roll. I'm going to have to go by there and check them out. And all the other materials from YWAC Sewing Supplies. I cannot say enough about YWAC when it comes to thread selection. Heads up to cool people, which means people like you, looking for heavy duty threads. Heads up to leather crafters and preppers. Yeah, I think thread is an important prep, and I agree with that. I've got quite a bit of nylon thread, like green and brown. Don't look too close at the sewing. Too late, we already have. It's not the prettiest sewing, but it, it's definitely working. I did it all myself on the treadle singer, and my inexperience shines. Uh, I don't know, that's better than I could do. I mean, put me in front of the sewing machine with this material and I'll show you some Frankenstein. The fun I had making it was what counted to me and that is what's awesome. Uh, you're pretty awesome for making this. Um, guys and gals, if you want to make your own, feel free to copy his ideas. Um, it's definitely heavy duty. On a, an apocalypse scale of 1 to 10, this tarp is probably a seven and a half to eight. If the uh, sewing was prettier, it would be a solid eight. If it was lighter, it would be a nine or 10. But I don't know how you can get it light, uh, lighter, um, without removing all these features, like the trekking pole um, thingamajiggers, the alien loop, things like that. So. I think that's about as high as you can get without start removing features. So what I don't like most about this tarp is probably that I don't get to keep it. So thanks Bob for letting me use it for a while. Um, used it yesterday, I had it set up uh, last week when I first got it to kind of try it out, using it tonight. Well thanks for watching Survival Theory, make sure you like and subscribe. Forty-five minutes to an hour left for dark, and the rain is now coming down. I thought it would be a lot earlier than now, but better late than never. So I got to get busy gathering some dry material for the fire. 